Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly, and today you're joining me for episode one of the slightly revamped Dan Brown monologue series, where I talk about random topics each week. Every Thursday a new video of me talking and witching away at you goes live, and sometimes it'll be the art of happiness chat, so I talk about random things I've noticed from other people and how they act and how it influences influences their lives and things like that. Other times I just talk about random things of the moment that I want to talk about. But now we have got the stainless steel pan of random topics to choose from. So a lot of these are um, viewer submitted topics to talk about. So feel free to leave comments down below on things that you want me to do a chat video about. But now, for the first time ever, let's lift the lid. Let's put it above high eye height. Have a good mix around here and then choose our first random topic ever. And what is it? My earliest memory. Now, as I say, a lot of these are um, submitted by everybody out there commenting and all the rest of it. So there's a lot of random things like this that I wouldn't have necessarily thought of doing videos on of my own accord. So thank you so much if you have entered this topic. And my apologies if I'm, I cannot recall who or the multiple people who've suggested some of the items that will come up out of the stainless steel pan of random topics. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> Let's get, get away from saying that over and over again. My earliest memory. Now, this is something that there's a few things in my mind that I couldn't really put them in a specific order of events of which was which thing is the earliest. But I think there's, I suppose we'll go for one just sort of humorous memory from very, very, very long ago. And that is when me and my mum and dad went away on holiday to somewhere around the Tenby area in Wales, another classic iconic sort of holiday place for people in this sort of area to go to and further into the Midlands as well. Um, and Tenby itself is a nice little Welsh town right on the coast. There's all sorts of stuff there. You've got Coldy Island where the monks live and there's, I'll leave it, a link in the description in fact to a Wikipedia article or some sort of uh, place that you'll be able to see a few sights and scenes from there because it is a fascinating little place. There's a lot of lovely scenery around that area too. Um, but my well, one of my earliest memories definitely comes from being out in that region and I can remember very clearly in my mind and I know the place like when I've been back there in more recent times, which even recently I'm talking about like over a decade ago I think now, which again how scary is it that time flies so fast. Um, but I always remember us being there and parking the car up and having chips on the seafront but it was an absolutely terrible, windy, bitter cold day and the tide was right in. And Anyway, we finished our chips, classic holiday stuff once again, went down the, um, down the flight of steps, like sort of in amongst the rocky sort of seafront there. And the waves were all crashing up and they, like every now and then would spray against us. And it was like just that sort of, woo, yeah, look at this dramatic sort of scenery and stuff, especially for me being... I mean, goodness knows how young I was at that point. I mean, we're talking, I don't know if I would even be as old as maybe five or six. I mean, I could be even younger than that. Like, But I always remember we were just down there and my mum wanted to leave because we were going to get a soaking from one of these rogue waves sooner or later. And then just before we did, an absolutely huge wave coming up absolutely smashing into like just a, a wall of white sea foam and my goodness me we were absolutely soaked through it was one of those in the modern age if that was um well, in the modern age somebody guarantees would have surely caught it on camera but it would have been one of those moments that definitely would have come straight up onto the youtube as a little video and would have soon been picked up and put into some sort of fail compilation like fail army or that sort of stuff of us walking up the steps rather dejected absolutely soaked through to then obviously have to get back into the car and drive back to the caravan site that we were staying at. So that's, that's one of my earliest memories. But I think really, 
let's think. I, the only thing that strikes me as the possible earliest memory that I've possibly got, I will tell you in just a moment after I have a quick swig of water. So then, my actual earliest memory, and I'm not sure if this is even realistic to have this memory, but I can recall it all so vividly and so clearly that living in our very, very old house that I used to live in with me mum and dad way back in the very, very old days. I mean, I'm saying I might only have been like maybe three years old at the oldest here, but I can always remember sort of a lot of stuff from that house as a child. Like I'd be setting up little fake shops selling random toys that I had and just finding a little cubby hole between some like a desk and a wardrobe and stuff like that and making a little shop front and all of these things from when I was really, really young, like before starting school or if starting school, being at very, very young little school. And I can remember even at reception class before I started, even before pri even before the school, before primary school, I can't think what that's called to him. But basically, I can even remember there, if my mum hadn't come to pick me up for dinner and I was there waiting for a couple of minutes, I'd be immediately crying my eyes out and terrified that she was never going to come back. But going way back beyond all of this, I can remember... Living in, there's only a nice little house, tiny house um, in the Oswald Street, and I can remember being in my cot in th uh, this old house, and it was at like a weird angle in the bedroom, so there was like room all around it, because obviously when you're a tiny baby and very young, you don't have like, well, especially in that age, before you had like a desk that you might sit at with a computer and stuff like that in there. Um, it was just an empty room practically with just a few little bits and pieces and baby stuff. Um, and I can remember climbing out of the cot, which seemed like the biggest thing ever to like scale and get out of. And it's really weird this, the more I'm thinking about it, because as uh, my friends have had their baby recently, or a year ago now, and seeing like the cot that he's in and how small it really is, really, it's something that I spoke to them right in the last few months, this memory, that I can remember being in the cot and it being like this huge thing to try and get out of. And this is a time where I must have, I could walk at this point, and I can remember climbing out of the cot, and I had a set of... Uh, skittles and like a ball, a ball obviously to bowl at them that all went in a little sort of set of six that had a little um, sink like was like a little rack that they went in, and I can remember being so small that I could just about climb out of the cot. Then I'd get this set of skittles, walk that over to the top of the stairs, and then stand on top of that to climb over the child gate at the top of the stairs. And again, you can imagine this, like, I, I can remember like almost the feeling of doing it rather than the actual sort of specific events itself, if that makes sense. But I can remember climbing over and like these skittles getting all crushed and obviously that sort of, oh, that's a bit naughty, oh my goodness me. And then getting onto the stairs, climbing down the stairs, which was the slowest, like most dangerous thing I'd ever done at that point, I can probably say. Um, and then getting to like the bottom of the stairs, being able to clamber over the gate there and then like struggling. And I don't think I even did. I think I had to knock on the living room door to get that door opened and then just walking through and my mum being there. Like, what on earth's going on? You've got downstairs. This And it's so weird. I can remember sort of the feeling of being naughty and doing something I wasn't meant to do and the feeling almost of wow, this is really bad what I'm doing. And I can't really remember anything beyond that, but the real specific memories that I've got are standing on the skittles and those crushing under me, obviously massive weight as a tiny uh, child. Um, but then also, the like I say, the feeling. And it's really weird. And I can remember the cot and that sort of, just it being slightly blue and obviously because there were lights on and that because I was a tiny baby terrified of everything and I'm saying baby I obviously wasn't a tiny baby if I could walk but again this has got to be to say I had the cot I'll have to see if um, I can find out from me mum when I uh, stopped sleeping in a cot and had an actual bed but again there's so many little things like that that um well, yeah, I, d I don't know. I'm sorry, I've completely fascinated myself the more I've thought about this. And 
actually saying it out loud to you all. So I think there we'll wrap that up as that's my earliest memory. I don't know if that's of any interest whatsoever, probably not, but I hope you've enjoyed hearing it anyway. And you may also have noticed how unbelievably dark it is getting on board Tilly and at the moment it's only about half four at night and again because we've now got the nice drawn in early nights there's something sort of extremely cosy about it especially the fire on Tilly here is just smouldering away a little bit, not giving out a huge amount of heat, but just enough that I'm feeling almost too warm to have my cap and be buttoned up all the way to the top. And again, I mean, this is as cosy as it gets, if you ask me, especially with all these little lights on here. But... I suppose I will wrap things up and say thank you so much for watching. Like I say, if you've got any random ideas or topics that you want me to talk about, leave them in the comments below and I'll add them to the stainless steel pan of random topics. Um, and on that note, like I say, please do check out my other videos for my normal sort of countryside outdoors boating videos. Feel free to add me on Facebook and Twitter if you want to see loads of scenery and stuff like that. And if you would like to help me out, then please do consider checking out my short boat life books for the Kindle. You'll find links to all those and more in the description below. But until the next time, keep it pan worthy. Keep it boat worthy, have a fantastic day and of course, farewell.